First, let me say uh, what a great uh, pleasure and an honor uh, to have been invited uh, to be a global advisor to the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet. I am, uh, of course, one of those who has uh, perhaps more than a passing interest in climate change, and I'm sure that many of us in due course will develop uh, that sort of interest because, as we know, I mean, this is uh, an existential problem for all of us. I want to say that um, I'm particularly happy that um, I'll be working with the uh, Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet, in particular because of the great work they've done already in partnership, because really the solutions uh, to some of the issues that we're going to find in climate change now and going forward cannot be done by any one country or any one individual or any one organization. Partnership must be at the core, and we must find ways of being effective in building those partnerships and making those partnerships work. And I think that GIAP has done uh, thus far very, an excellent work in building those partnerships, building those coalitions, and trying to make them work. And we've seen a lot of that happen here in Nigeria. Uh, but let me say uh, that, again, something that's pretty obvious, and that is that uh, this climate crisis is existential. Whether uh, we like it or not, it's evident that if we don't take very serious and very prompt action, uh, the world as we know it will, may uh, not exist, but perhaps even worse uh, for those of us in this part of the world, in the developing countries, because we're not necessarily as prepared as countries of the, uh, as countries in the uh, global north, we may find ourselves uh, really at the, uh, at the very wrong end of things. And we may find ourselves suffering far more than anywhere else, because we're, our states are still relatively economically fragile and what we're seeing already is evidence that there is a lot that we need to do and to do quickly in order to uh, reverse uh, what we're seeing today. So I think that for us in this part of the world in particular, in Africa and the developing world, it's not just about climate, it's not just about climate change and climate action. It is perhaps more about ensuring energy access at the same time. So as we resolve the climate change issues, we must resolve the energy access issues. And the energy access is central for us because it is at the heart of development. If, no matter how we approach this, if we don't deal with the energy access issues, if, there is, if our people do not have the sort of energy that is required for development, and Simon was talking a moment ago about what's happening in the market in Ekorodu and how you know, just having uh, power, renewable energy in, in this case, has simply transformed the businesses there and transformed the lives of, of the individuals who are involved in those businesses. And that really is at the core of the work that uh, we're, we're trying to do uh, with GIAP and the other partnerships and coalitions. Our emphasis here must be and, and has, uh, uh, has been with GIAP on the whole question of how do we provide access to energy for so many people, millions and millions of people. Of course, we're familiar with some of the statistics, you know, that uh, uh, the, the kinds of, um, and some of those statistics are quite startling. The sheer numbers of people, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, who have no access to electricity. And that means no access to development on the scale that is required uh, to be able to conquer disease, to be able to conquer poverty, and, and you know, and all of the other uh, devastations that come along with underdevelopment. So I think that we, we really have uh, to deal with the questions of, of energy access. And perhaps one of the, for us, uh, again, in this part of the world, one of the critical things that we're, we must pay attention to, and I believe that... Um, it is also one of the very important 
uh, reasons why we are in this alliance with GF and why we must work together towards this. It's a fact that, you know, Africa can no longer just see itself as a victim of, of climate change. The truth of the matter is that Africa can be the solution to uh, several of the issues arising from climate change. And, and how is this? We have renewable energy on, this, on you know, enormous uh, resources. We have natural resources, of course, uh, for batteries, for instance, lithium. We, many of us, of course, are familiar with some of what is going on all over the world with just, uh, just lithium in Zimbabwe, even in Nigeria, in Kaduna here, you know, for batteries and all of that. We have a young working population that is prepared and ready. Our carbon sinks are some of the largest in the world, even larger. I mean, our forests you know, and, and, and other carbon sinks are some of the largest in the world. So it is possible with the coalitions that we can form to make Africa the answer to, uh, to, to climate change the answer to some of the types of climate action that we need to resolve climate change. And that, for me, is, you know, uh, is, 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 a, is a very important issue. And, and, I, and I believe that is one that we must focus on because it is possible for Africa then to become, you know, uh, the big uh, job engine. We can actually create millions of job opportunities for our young people using renewable energy. And we have a chance of becoming perhaps the first uh, truly green civilization in the world. And, that, and all of that is possible, only possible if we're able to do a grand bargain with the world. Only possible if we're able to align with uh, the wealthier countries of the world and align with uh, others who are committed to this same cause and see that this is perhaps the quickest and perhaps the most efficient solution to some of what we're talking about. There are those who have said, and I believe they are right, that if, that if you look at, uh, if Africa were to develop along the same carbon intensive trajectory that um, the other countries, the wealthier countries of the world have gone, then it will be impossible for the entire world to achieve carbon zero by 2050 or 2060 or whenever else, for the reason that we then become also the major emitters of, 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 of carbon. And that way, nobody can achieve anything. So the world cannot even afford to watch us, you know, uh, do exactly what has been done by other countries. There has to be a green energy solution to development of Africa and, uh, and the rest of the world. That's the only way by which the world can realistically achieve uh, carbon zero by any of the target dates that have been set. So I'm certainly looking forward to the great work that lies ahead uh, of us, and I hope that um, we'll have your cooperation in, in working through several of the issues uh, that, that we'll be that we'll be working through. I, I already, um, Simon has spoken about the work that GIAP is doing in Nigeria, but um, it's not just Nigeria, of course. It's the rest of all over Africa and in several different countries of the world. And we have to cooperate with countries of the world. We have to ensure that we're able to uh, work with everyone because uh, this is perhaps, you know, that one big issue that the entire world realizes that if we don't do enough and we don't do enough together, we just might end up uh, without this world uh, as we know it. So again, just to say thank you very much to uh, uh, GF for uh, the honor of joining uh, the work that GF is doing as global advisor. And uh, to thank you all very much uh, for coming here this afternoon. Thank you.